there are at different stages of uh, trials. But none is yet uh, approved or licensed for public use. What's my way down? Yes, uh, we, 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 I would say the system fights uh, in some way because uh, the mortality is not 100%. So those surviving, they must have their cover from the immune system. For them to have survived, that shows their immune system ability over when the viral uh, particles. So that's why they are able to survive. Mm. And uh, what the, the, the drug or the vaccines are aiming at is to boost the immune system so that, for instance, the American guys that were given uh, the, the therapy, they were given uh, antibodies, monoclonal antibodies raised against some proteins of the virus. So, and that's what they are mimicking the natural system. So in the body, the immune system will also develop uh, antibodies to the virus. So once the antibodies overwhelm the virus, then the virus will go the level, the level of the virus will be down. So it's a matter of time. An individual too, who has very uh, potent uh, immune system to wage uh, war against the virus particles. The, the essence of vaccines is to prepare ahead of time. So immunize uh, the host ahead of contracting the wild virus. So anytime the wild virus comes in, the host is already primed, so there will be an amnestic response to such a wild virus attack. So that's what the vaccine uh, is uh, going to do. What's my wild uh, one of the challenges has to do with the fact that it is not like other viruses that we can toy with under BSL-2 facilities. For any meaningful research work on uh, viruses like Ebola, we need a BSL-4, or called Maximum Containment uh, Facility, because of uh, the uh, security nature that one really needs, the biosafety uh, for the uh, researcher, for the environment where the research work is being carried out. So that has been the major challenge. And uh, we only have few places where we have the containment facilities. And uh, the research work that are ongoing have been carried out in these few uh, containment facilities. So that's a major challenge facing a much or aggressive research work uh, in this area. Uh, we've had an outbreak now because a single case is an outbreak. So already we have an outbreak. And uh, I would say we have been undergoing training. Uh, the experts are around training our doctors on how to manage the patients. Our lab scientists have been undergoing training, they have been uh, trained, and um, so also are our uh, epidemiologists, public health uh, physicians. So they have been trained on how to do proper contact tracing, on how to identify cases, and uh, so that before the virus now goes uh, beyond uh, any control, such individuals have been identified. And of course, we are having isolation wards uh, countrywide now. So we started with Lagos. So the experience with Lagos State uh, is being spread to other states that there is need for the states to identify isolation centers in case of possible uh, Ebola viral disease outbreak end of the states. So I would say we have started uh, responding well uh, from Lagos State end. We have, we have isolated uh, 
uh, works. And then we have uh, uh, clinicians being trained on how to handle cases, on how to manage cases. And what we actually need to put in place is biosecurity. Uh, we have PPEs. PPEs are personal protective equipment that we need to put on while attending to cases. And uh, there is a need for us to know how to actually put on the PPE and how to remove them and what to do with them after contaminating them. We don't recycle PPE, we only use ones and we are the, we, 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 we try to uh, remove uh, all the contaminants by dipping it into hypochlorite before we now auto clean and then get uh, the whole thing incinerated. So we've been receiving training on how to handle this. And then for the contact tracing too, uh, the experts have taught us on how to go about tracing uh, uh, contacts. And uh, as for our labs too, where we carry out diagnosis. So we have, uh, we have identified labs that have the capacity and capability uh, to do the diagnosis. For instance, our lab in Lagos here in Root, so we have the capacity, we have the capability. Uh, UCH has the capacity, capability. Uh, Asoporo lab in uh, Abuja, they have the capacity with the help of the CDC. Um, then there's another one or two other labs. I know there are five labs that uh, have the capacity uh, for, uh, for challenging uh, Ebola virus disease in the country. So it's, it's not going to stay here. Actually, uh, uh, what we really need uh, the public uh, to take note of. We know how the virus is transmitted, and that now means we need to now maintain a hygienic environment. To cultivate the habit of good hand washing. If we want to eat, we make sure we wash our hand with water and soap. Water and soap. Those two are enough to keep our hands fit enough to heat because we know the transmission is by contact. If you contact the droplet or the source of the virus and we take to mouth, we successfully transmitting the virus. So, and the virus, as we know, is very fragile. Soap and water, we get rid of it. So, hand washing, hand washing is very critical in this moment of us, as we don't know who is incubating the virus and the virus is very rich in the body fluids even in the saliva it's very even in the sweat because the viruses uh, grow they move very closely to the skin surfaces so what we need now is to make sure we cultivate the uh, good hand washing and then we should go about with uh, hand sanitizers or prepare jig, or the common uh, household uh, name, jig, or hypochlorite, prepare 5%. We use this to disinfect our hands, to wash our hands. So this is what we really need. And then, of course, to educate ourselves on what to do. And if there is anybody that we feel is having a suspected case, perhaps the individual has contacted the contact who is already confirmed to carry the virus. So such a contact will be restricted, will be restrict their movement to that public gatherings. Even at home, they should restrict themselves from their uh, families until the incubation period is over. Because we know the incubation period is between two days and 21 days of contract. So once this is over, we know such an individual is free of the virus. So those are the information that we really need to keep our mind at rest. We know how the virus is transmitted, so we know what to do, and we know about wild animals. A lot of wild animals in the bush, they are capable of contracting the virus from infected foods that they eat. 
And once they contract it, they will come down with the disease. And any human beings are dealing with such infected animals, we pick the virus too. So we have to refrain ourselves from uh, mixing with animals, especially wild animals, talk less of uh, uh, preparing for food. So you see, in the process of preparing wild animals, especially those that are already carrying the virus, that we stand the chance of getting ourselves infected. So those are the information we Yes, I did mention earlier on that uh, we know how the virus uh, moves in an individual. So the incubation period, that's the time of contract and the time when an individual starts showing signs. So it's between 48 hours and 21 days. So within this period, so that's why we have uh, uh, levels of contacts. We have those that have very close contact with somebody that uh, carry the virus. And those that have medium contact, and those that have very uh, minimal contact, either passing through the uh, world where the uh, case is. Or, so, so we have all those uh, levels of contacts. And so we treat such contacts. Um, so we put them under surveillance within this incubation period. And what we do really is to monitor the body temperatures. Because by the time the virus is growing in the system, so there is perineal phase. And with the perineal phase, there is elevated body temperature. So we we'll pick this once they are uh, incubating the virus. So the moment we say they have fever, so we take their blood samples. We screen whether it's truly due to Ebola virus or not. So that's the kind of thing we are doing. And those ones that we pick among those contacts being solving. The moment we notice that they are circulating the virus, they are now moved into the isolation room. So that's what we've been doing. Uh, like you said, the Honorable Minister mentioned the over 100 uh, contacts that we've been monitoring. Yes, we've been monitoring them. And that's what we've been doing monitoring their uh, body temperatures in the morning and in the evening. So they, they are all uh, having a, a digital thermometers that we do that. And we have all our uh, the contact tracers are very close to all of them getting information. Yes, that's the essence of early detection. The moment you detect them very early, the chance of survival is very high. It's very, very high. 